I'm gonna let the glory roll when the roll is caught in glory. I'm gonna get beside of myself when I get beside that king that day. I'm gonna have the time of my life when the time of my life is over. I'm gonna get carried away when I get carried away. I'm gonna let the glory roll when the roll is caught in glory. I'm gonna get beside of myself when I get beside that king that day. I'm gonna have a time of my life when the time of my life is over. I'm gonna get carried away when I get carried away. Well, I don't know why I become a little shy when I get around a whole lot of people. And I can figure out why I never can shout about the love that floods my soul. Well, I must confess that I can't express these feelings deep inside me. But the things I know why I cannot show one day. I'm gonna let the glory roll when the roll is caught in glory. I'm gonna get beside of myself when I get beside the king that day. I'm gonna have a ton of my life when the time of my life is over. I'm gonna get carried away when I get carried away. Oh, I'll pass the clouds and shout so loud it may sound like thunder. My cheerful eyes shall fill the sky until it looks like rain. When I leave this all past the gates of Paul and rest before my Savior. I'll let my soul, let the glory roll when the glory calls my name. Oh, I'm gonna let the glory roll when the roll is called in glory. I'm gonna get beside of myself when I get beside the king that day. I'm gonna have the time of my life when the time of my life is over. I'm gonna get carried away when I get carried away. I'm gonna let the glory roll when the roll is caught in glory. I'm gonna get beside of myself when I get beside the king that day. I'm gonna have a time of my life when the time of my life is over. I'm gonna get carried away when I get carried away. I'm gonna get carried away when I get carried away. I'm gonna get carried away when I get carried away. I'm gonna get carried away. Carried away when I get carried away. I'm gonna let the glory roll when the roll is caught in glory. I'm gonna get beside of myself when I get beside the king that day. I'm gonna have the time of my life when the time of my life is over. I'm gonna get carried away when I get carried away. I'm gonna get carried away when I get carried away. I'm gonna get carried away when I get carried away. I'm gonna get carried away, carried away. When I get carried away Swing low Swing low Sweet cherry Coming for to carry me home
Why don't you swing, swing down cherry stop and let, let me ride? Swing down cherry stop and let, let me ride. Rock me low, rock, rock me low. Me low. Come and easy. I've got a home, home on the other side. Why don't you swing, swing down cherry stop and let, let me ride? Swing, swing down cherry stop and let, let me ride. Rock me low, rock, rock me low. low. Come Come and easy. Uh, I got a home, home on the other side. Well, then I looked, looked over Jordan. 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 What, what did I see? Yes, I looked, looked over Jordan. Jordan. What, what did I see? A sweet oh, down cherry. That's coming that's for me. me. I got a home, home on the uh, other side. Why don't you swing, swing down cherry? Stop and let, let me ride. Swing swing down chair, stop and let, let me ride. Rock me low, rock me low. Come and easy. Uh, I got a home, home on the other side. Why don't you swing down chair, stop and let, let me ride. Swing, swing down chair, stop and let, let me ride. Rock me low, rock me low. Come, come and easy. Uh, I got a home, home on the other side. Well, there were two, two white horses standing side by side. This whole chair is gonna let me ride. And one of these morning, bright and early, I got a home on the other side. Swing down, chair is open. Let me ride. Swing down, chair is open. Let me ride, rock me low, rock me low, come and easy, I got a home, home on the uh, other side, why don't you swing, swing down chair and stop and let, let me ride, swing, swing down chair and stop and let me ride, rock me low, rock me low, come and easy, uh, I got a home, home on the uh, other side,
Uh, let me see that maybe you allowed, you, did you allow your Bibles to come to church with you this evening? I, I, I would encourage that we bring our Bibles to, to church when we, uh, when we come to church here. Let us pause for a moment of prayer. Our Lord and our Father in heaven, we thank you for the time that you have given to us. We invite the Holy Presence of the Holy Spirit to minister to all of us and meet all of us at our point of need. It is Sabbath and others have come to this place sick and sick spiritually. Remind us one more time this evening that burdens are lifted at Calvary and that there is still a balm in Gilead and his name is Jesus. In Jesus we have prayed. Amen. Amen. This evening I would like us to look into the book of Mark. Uh, Mark, the gospel according to John Mark. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. I would like us at least for this moment to, to, uh, to, uh, to read verse 1 of verse 1. The Bible reads as follows. And now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Siloam, brought spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when, he, when, the, when the sun had risen. And they said amongst themselves, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? But when they looked up, they saw a stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. Entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in white robes, sitting on the right side, and they were all alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See where they laid him. He is risen and see where they had laid him. John Mark writes his gospel in a city of Rome after a fire had started in Rome. And Bible students or Bible commenters would say that the occasion of the writing of the book of Mark is when the church in Rome was persecuted and people in Rome were on a verge of giving up their faith. And Mark sits down to write to them to encourage them that the story of the gospel or the gospel of Jesus is not just a myth, but it is actually reality. When we were in Solusi some years ago, it was 2010, I said it during the week, that electricity in Solusi or in Zimbabwe has a tendency of going. There was a time where Bafana Bafana was supposed to be playing with Uruguay. And we all went to the student center to watch Bafana Bafana. And arrogantly, Bafana Bafana is a South African national team. We took our flags. We went to the, to the student center. And when we were singing the national anthem, waiting for the game to start, electricity did what it was famous of doing. And it went, and lo and behold, we had no electricity. Now, note this. Electricity does not, as electricity goes, the game does not wait for those who don't have electricity. The game will continue whilst you are waiting in the darkness. The, the following day, I spoke to my sister, uh, over uh, via email, she sent me an email that told me that Bafana Bafana was beaten thoroughly. I think the score was around four, a uh, four zero. And uh, and woke up the following day, got into the uh, student center. I found people watching the game that played yesterday. Some of them did not know the score, but I knew the score. I sat in the confidence of knowing the results, that no matter how much Bafana Bafana can attack, the game has already been finished because they are watching a game that played yesterday. 
Those who believe in Jesus, even in tough circumstances, they are not threatened by the devil because they are sitting in the confidence of knowing the results. It is always good to know that when you are in the side of Jesus, when you are a child of God, you are already on the winning team even when things get tough. Now, when you get to chapter 16 of the book of Mark, we know how the story concludes, but the disciples and, 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 and all other followers of Jesus did not know how the story was going to end. Imagine with me, Jesus going to Calvary, carrying the cross of Calvary. He is beaten and people are spitting on him. He is going via Dolorosa, going towards the Mount of Calvary. When he was in going to the Mount of Calvary on the way to the mountain the Bible says there was a man called Simon of Sarin an Ethiopian by origin a black man who was passing who had gone for a Passover and the record says when Jesus got tired it was the black man that carried the cross of Jesus I'm here to say to someone this evening that as that black man carried the cross of Jesus he was not only carrying the hopes of his family alone but he was also carrying the hopes of Africa with him. He goes to the Mount of Calvary. They get into the mountain. The Bible says as, as they got into the mountain, there were three crosses in the mountain. There is a middle cross, a center cross, and there are two other crosses that had two criminals on the crosses. One writer says a very interesting theological submission says these three crosses were different but were united by one person. It says the cross, the first cross of the other man was a man dying in his sins. The cross, the other cross was a man dying from his sins and the center cross was a cross of a man dying for their sins. The two crosses were united by the man that was in the center. And imagine with me brothers and sisters, Jesus is in the cross. He is nailed. He is standing lifted up between heavens and the earth and he is nailed. One writer, Josephus, says as one soldier who was nailing Jesus, his right eye was a blind eye. As he nails Jesus, as the blood oozes from the hands of Jesus, it sprinkled the eye of this man and immediately he received sight. As he's killing Jesus, he gets a blessing of being healing and he reminds us of Isaiah when he says, by his wounds we are healed. The Bible says Jesus shouted, it is finished. And Ellen White says in Desire of Ages, when Jesus said it is finished and he dies, there was a celebration in hell between demons and their commander in chief, who is the devil. Imagine Jesus dying in the cross and a centurion standing from, a, from afar. The centurion says, indeed, this was the son of God. They take Jesus. It is interesting, I want us to note this. Jesus dies and the Sabbath is being ushered. The guys who are nailing Jesus are rushing to keep the Sabbath, but keeping the Sabbath that is bereaved of the rest. They are nailing the Sabbath of the Sabbath personified and running to keep the Sabbath of the day. One writer says, if you look into the Old Testament, when you read Genesis, the chapter in Genesis, chapter 1 to chapter 3, God is always addressed as God Jehovah Elohim, a God or God Jehovah Elohim, a God that is transcendent. But when you get into the Sabbath, the language shifts. He is no longer addressed as God Jehovah Elohim. He is addressed as God Jehovah Yahweh, a God that is with his people. On the Sabbath, Jesus takes a move and he does not become a God that is transcendent, but he becomes a God that is imminent. As they are nailing an imminent God, they are rushing to keep the Sabbath, but they are leaving the rest which is Jesus. Imagine the Jews nailing Jesus, Jesus dying, rushing to keep the Sabbath, but leaving the God of the Sabbath in the cross. And the Bible says Jesus was buried, they rushed and they left and they went home. Imagine with me 
that there was a there was a conversation between the devil and death and the devil asked death mr death said are you sure that you can keep this man because we have seen this man opening the eyes of the blind. We have seen this man raising the dead. We have seen this man healing all manner of diseases. Are you sure that you can keep him in the grave? And death says, don't worry, Mr. S don't worry, Mr. Satan. You remember David, uh, David, a man after God's heart. He is dead and buried and he is still under my grip. And the devil got really worried and said, are you sure he says remember Abraham the father of faith he is dead and he is going nowhere and he is kept in the grave I imagine that the Sabbath as they rush to church Sabbath school the devil is keeping a, a he's keeping the Sabbath but a Sabbath outside of the Savior he is sitting with his demons celebrating but his heart is not in what is happening but his heart is in the man I imagine after 12 before divine service he comes back and check is this man there and death arrogantly speaks say do not worry he is going nowhere his grave he is in the grave he is here remember Solomon the wisest man a man who was close to God he is dead he is in the grave and he is going nowhere he is under my grip but the Bible says early Sunday morning as they were going towards the grave, the women are talking with each other. Who shall roll away the stone from the entrance of the grave? For the stone was big and it was huge. But the Bible says when they looked, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. When they get inside the grave, they find a young man. Ellen White says in Tizar of Ages, the stone was moved at, with ease, without difficulties. And when they got closer to the cross, they find the young man. He says, who are you looking for? Are you looking for the Jesus of Nazareth? He is not here. He is risen. I remember the Apostle Paul says, if Christ is not risen, even our hope and our faith is in vain. Now, because Christ is risen, our hope is built on nothing, but it is built on a man that has died and resurrected from the grave. Now, this story teaches us as well an important lesson that Jesus is different from all the other gods of other religions. Number one, in Christianity, in other religions, before we get to Christianity, the gods of other religions expect their subjects to die for them. We find Confucius, people dying for him. We find Islam, sometimes they will go to a war, a, 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 a jihad called holy war, where people are expected to die for religion. But when you look at Jesus, you are not required to die for, for anything because the leader of Christianity, Christ himself, has died. Therefore, we don't need to die when Jesus has already died for us. The second interesting thing is that Jesus is not in the grave tonight. His grave is empty. One of the World Heritage sites today when people go to visit in Israel via the Gaza Street, there is a grave of a man called Jesus. Even tonight as I speak with you, it is empty. And the empty grave, it is the anchor and the center of the Christian hope that me and you today, we do not need to worship anyone that has no proof that he has solution over death. Jesus has solution over death. He died and tonight he is alive and the Bible says he is in heaven interceding on our behalf. Hence, this evening we can come boldly to the throne of grace knowing that we have a mediator with the Father Christ Jesus. I was reading, one writer says, if in Kenya but he was writing about South Africa. He says, if in South Africa or in Kenya, there is corruption. In South Africa, corruption is there as well. If you want a tender from the government, you cannot take, get a tender unless you know someone inside the office who is connected to the tenders. And this guy says, even in heaven, there is holy corruption. 
You cannot get the things of God without knowing someone in the office. And that someone in the office is none other than Jesus. When we come to Jesus, the benefits of salvation, even the benefits of our prayers are gotten because we've got an older brother in Christ Jesus who is there, who is interceding for us. I remember during the week I told you that I grew up without brothers. I had two sisters. Now, you know, in the street, I don't know in, 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 in Kenya, but in the streets where I was growing in Soweto, a boy will simply go and beat you for fun. A person, if he sees that he is fit and he can beat you and you can do nothing, he will give you a thorough beating and beat you in the name of Jesus. So when I was beaten and you fight, I did not have a brother that I will take, I will tell, but I will get beaten in the street when I get home. I had two sisters, I still have two sisters who talk too much. So instead of calling a brother, I will come, I am the center, there is the last one, there is the first one. They will come and I will also walk with them and they will come and talk too much and they will tell you your business and you will be finished and become no one in a second. I trusted my sister that they will not even talk to you, they will simply speak to you at times. They will swear in the name of Jesus and you will bet that they are not Adventists. I, I remember... There was someone um, who was writing on Facebook at home about pastors. And that person made a mistake to write my name. I did not tell my sisters, but my sisters were on Facebook. The guy I had by report that my name was written, but when I checked Facebook, the name was removed. And I asked myself, why did the name, why was the name removed? And someone said, your sisters spoke. And I wondered in my heart, I wonder what they said. But it was enough to make it to disappear in the name of Jesus. But all of us sitting here who do not have brothers to fight for us, the Bible says the bigger brother that we have, he is not dead, but he is alive. Instead of running to people for solutions, let us not run to people for solutions. Rather, let us go to Jesus. Because Jesus, it, was, it is he that was alive but this evening, he, it was he that was dead, but this evening he is alive. Hence, when me and you come before the throne, we know that we do not belong to a losing team, but we belong to a winning team, a team that has the name of Jesus. Amen. I remember one time I got to Zimbabwe, and there was a place called Chisipiti. Chisipiti is a place where rich people stay. So I, I had a friend whose mother was in the intelligence. So I arrived in that home, that home had a double story home, and I was happy that I slept upstairs in the name of Jesus. But you know, people in the rural areas and people in the location where I'm coming from, we are not used to go with dogs in town. Our dogs, uh, at times we don't even feed them. They can go and eat in the streets. There is no problem. But guys in town, when they go with their dogs, they go with big dogs. So when one day I was watching this guy, this guy was walking with a big dog, a bulldog kind of a dog, and it had feet like this. You know, the feet that it had when it walked, it was as if it was doing show off. It would walk slowly. And the guy would pull the dog and the dog would continue walking slowly. And what made me interested is that when they passed another house, small dogs, those small dogs came out under, under the gate and went directly to the direction of that dog. And they started barking in the name of Jesus, barking seriously. As they are barking seriously, I thought the bulldog will be disturbed. Instead of the bulldog to be disturbed, it was not disturbed. Step, it just looked left and just looked right and continued walking. As they were backing, it was not intimidated. All of us that belong to Jesus, when the devil throws things, we are not intimidated because we know the one we are walking with. The one we are walking with, he is the one that deals and that has a 
that has a reputation of dealing with things that we can never do for ourselves. I want to say to all of us this evening, the grave is empty. There is nothing that prevents us to kneel down and go boldly to the throne of grace to look for help in time of need. I know what Jesus can do. As you are sitting here, some of us are in a valley where we are thinking exams are coming. We are discouraged. We are asking, when will, how will I write exams when I know that my fees are not all paid up? Let me tell you this, then, then we finish it this way. I've got a friend of mine in KZN, a very close friend of mine. He was always, every semester, he did not have fees. Every semester, and that used to surprise me that this guy, every semester, he goes to school without what? Without money. One day we were going to Zimbabwe, having booked the bus. I get into the bus, he gets into the bus with me, he says to me, he asked me, are you a pastor? Then I asked him, eh, are you not sure of your call? Why are you asking me something that you know? He said, I want you to go with me and pray at the ATM and tell Jesus that I don't have money. Uh, I talk too much. My friend does not talk. He's a man, he's a silent guy, a serious man of prayer. Then I answered theologically. I said, do you think God still showers people with manna from heaven? Uh, I think you should go and work and sell books, then go back to school. Then because he was pushing that we continue to do that, because I did not want to disturb or to, to discourage my friend, I went to the ATM and there were people behind us. And I prayed theologically that, Lord, I know that when you have opened doors for the pastor, he will get money to go to school. We get into the bus, we stop, a last stop before the border gate between South Africa and Zimbabwe. The guy goes to the machine, he says, let's go to the machine. We go there. He prays a very simple prayer that says, God, I never called myself, I never volunteered, you called me. My mom does not work but I want to go to school. Amen. He puts the card, and the account was still zero, zero. And I told him that I told you so. <clears throat> we went to Zimbabwe. As soon as we arrived, oh, eh, eh, as soon as we arrived at school, money was deposited in his account. But the reason why I'm sharing this story, where the story becomes interesting, is that even today, after we graduated long ago, we do not have a record of a person that has deposited the money. We have gone to the bank. The bank told us that, hey, the money was deposited, but we do not know. We suspect that the person who deposited the money asked that his identity be not to be shared. And when he got ordained this year, he sent me a text that says, Pastor, even after our troubles, we do not look like our problems. When God is done with you, people would not know where you are. It will only be you that will be able to tell a story that this Jesus that we worship is not just a fairy tale. It's a real story of a Jesus that is in the business of making sure that me and you, we become saved in the name of Jesus. I want to make a call this evening. I want to make two calls this evening. A call that says, I have been, I've seen people yesterday standing up to be baptized and I still want to be baptized, but I'm not sure. I'm in the veil of decision. If you are there and you want to be baptized tomorrow, the water is ready. Some of us are going to be leaving this year as we finish writing. It might be your last semester. All these three years or four years you have been here, you have been hearing the word of the Lord being spoken to you, and you have a desire to be baptized. I'm giving you an opportunity this evening that do not miss this opportunity for you to be baptized and joining those who have already taken a decision to walk with Jesus. I know, I know, if you can ask me, I know 
It is not easy to make a decision. It is not easy to make a decision for Jesus. What I know, but it is one of the best decisions one can take for himself. Jesus is alive. We can go to him at any time. He will give us power to live with him and live right with him. It is Jesus that is able to deliver you and also give you a new name. You know, I, I have seen, one day I was invited in the maximum prison of South Africa. Invited, there was a man who wanted to be baptized. When I got there, he asked me, a white guy, he asked me, do you know who I am? And I said to him, I don't know. Then he gives me a history. Around the early 90s, there was a white man in South Africa who was a serial killer. And he says, I am, that guy was a serial killer. And he said, I hated black people. Then I asked him, why did you call a black pastor to come and baptize you? He says, I'm asking for a black pastor to come and baptize me because one white pastor came and told me that Jesus cannot forgive me, that my sins cannot be forgiven. Up until an old lady who came and told me that there is no sin that Jesus cannot forgive. He says, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's also inviting to say, come, let us reason together. He is the only God that can give you a chair and give you an audience with him to say, come, bring that which you have and bring yourself as you are and allow me to transform your life. If it is your prayer that you will join tomorrow, those who will be baptized, can you please come forward? And I also want to pray for those who are saying that we are, I'm about to do this is semester should be my last semester and I will be writing exams are coming please Lord Jesus help me to graduate and go home if it is your prayer that you are doing your last year this year and you want the Lord to help you to go home and you want the Lord to help you to graduate the issue is not you going home but the issue is in you graduating and providing means for you to write if you are there and you have that prayer request in your heart. Please stand up with me as I pray with you. If you are a last year and you are supposed to be finishing this semester, if you are in our midst and that is your desire that we pray for you, please stand up with me as I, I pray with you. Still calling on those as well that are in our midst who want to be baptized and want to join those that stood up last night that have already made a decision and you are saying, I still want to be baptized. This is your chance tonight. Jesus is calling you. This is the opportunity for you to give Jesus a chance. If you are there, if you are there and God has spoken to you that you want to be baptized, you want to join this, that will be baptized tomorrow. I am calling on you to come. And also in our midst, there are those who are seated, who do not know whether they will write or not. If you don't know whether you will write or not, the fees are not paid, but you want to write your exams. If you are here and you want a miracle of grace, that God provide and give you that ability to write, if you are there, please stand up also as we pray with you. If you are not sure whether you write, fees are not paid. But you want to write and you want a miracle of grace to happen for you, please stand up as I pray with you. Still calling on those that would want to be baptized tomorrow. If you are sitting there, please do not allow this opportunity to pass you by. As others are baptized tomorrow, the opportunity, the door is still open for you to come forward. Let's write your name so that tomorrow 
when people are baptized and they are buried in the watery grave, you'll be amongst those who will be baptized. If that is your prayer and your desire, I'm still extending a call for you to come forward as, as to, to, to come forward so that you'll be baptized tomorrow so that we do not close you outside. God bless you, my sister. She is coming forward and she is coming to Jesus. If you want to join her, she has taken a decision to be baptized and you are sitting, you are thinking in your heart that I really do want to come, but it is tough. I'm here to tell you this evening that the devil is a liar. He says, I have come that they might have life and that they might have life in abundance. Life is in abundance in Jesus. Jesus is here this evening. I want to pray. The pastor is here to pray. But before we do that, we do not want to close you outside. We don't know, but you are in the veil of decision and you say you want to be baptized and God has spoken to you. This is your opportunity to come join those who will be baptized. Others are sitting here. I don't know your prayer request, but there is something in your heart that you want the Lord to do. Some of those things we can't even share with people, but there is something in your heart that you want the Lord to do for you. Please stand up. You can stand up and join those who are standing as we pray with you. Pastor, please come pray for us and extend a call to still to those who are still deciding to come and join our sister as we are preparing for baptism tomorrow. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Praise the Lord once again. I would like to offer prayer. After the prayer, we are going to meet with the church board, a very brief church board meeting to approve the baptism for Amen. tomorrow. Amen. Allow me to give just one chance that pastor has given to all of us, that if you know you will get baptized tomorrow, just come. Yes. If you know that you get baptized tomorrow, just come. Come. Thank you. Thank you. Let us sing that song that the instrumentalists are singing. Let's do one stanza and chorus. If you know you will get baptized tomorrow, come. Whether you have registered your name or you have not registered your name, just come. All other ground is sinking sun. Any other ground is sinking sun. If you are up there, find your way down here. And the chaplains' staff are going just to confirm as we sing that song. If you have not written your name, please write your name with them. Chaplains' staff, if you are here, please assist me. Let's sing that song. On Christ the Solid Rock, SDA hymnal. Let's have it so that we can sing. After that song, we will pray. Then church board will meet. And all youth amphitheater, AYS, Outreach and anyone else, Pastor will be speaking to. I hope he's built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness. They don't trust the sweetest friend, but only we on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand.
Lead rock and stand all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Brethren, we want to sing the last stanza when he shall come with the trumpet sound. Don't be left out. I want to invite their two pastor colleagues who have been here with me. Uh, pastor Grace, please come. Pastor Mayo, I know you are here. Please come. They will offer each just a brief prayer of power to us. The pastors are here. Pastor Mayo, please come. Pastor Grace, come. We are doing the last stanza and giving last opportunity for somebody who wants to come. We are going to offer three powerful prayers tonight. God will assist those who need to finish school. God will answer prayer. And God will bless everyone who is getting baptized. Please, if you are there, come as we sing. When he shall come with the trumpet sound. Let us sing. When he shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found. Glad in his righteousness alone. For less to stand. Amen. 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 The pastors here, the three of us are going to offer a brief prayer and church board will meet at Amphitheater for AY and Outreach. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Let us. Our Father in heaven, this evening we want to thank you so much. You've done great things in our lives and the summons this week has shown us that you are able and you are the answer to all our questions. We want to thank you so much this evening for our students. They have challenges of fees, and others are wondering how they are going to do exams on Monday. But because you live, and because you are alive forever, you are going to provide for them. Heavenly Father, this evening, I want to pray for those who are downhearted, that they trust in this name, and to know that you are able to make all ends meet. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing our prayer. It's a humble request in Jesus' name. We praise your name, Jehovah God, for bringing these mighty young men, ladies and gentlemen. You brought them here for a purpose. Now they have heard the message, Lord, for a long time, for this one week. We pray that the Daniels and Shetraks of this time will decide for you to be born again. For this great day, Lord, it belongs to you. I pray for these powerful young people. I pray for these powerful young people in the University of Eastern Africa. These are your sons and your daughters. These are men and women of substance. The people you brought here for four good years. Some of them will be graduating, Lord, and let them be born again. Mm. We are calling for the Holy Spirit. You have used our brothers and sisters, and we call upon you now, right, Jehovah God, as they decide, those ones who have come in front, accept them the way they are. Some have not come, but they will decide today. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for those who are finishing their studies this semester. Thank you so much for those who this is their last academic year. Bless them, Father. We pray that provide the money they need. And we pray that after Baraton, they will not be in a crisis of wondering where next because God of heaven, you will open doors for them. As we approach exams, there are those who are not sure where the money will come from. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you may perform a miracle and give them a testimony of a lifetime that you are God who provides. We want to thank you also for those who will get baptized. Turn their lives around, dear Heavenly Father. Save them for yourself. Protect them from the evil one. And may their prayers always be answered. May they never regret the decision they are making tonight. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you and good evening. <laughs>